guys, my name is Nako Nakatsuka. I'm a fourth year chemistry PhD student at UCLA and today I'll be helping you guys out by going over some general chemistry concepts. And good luck with the course! So now we move on to the topic of conjugation or conjugated molecules. So in chemistry, a conjugated system is a system of connected p orbitals with delocalized electrons. Sounds familiar, right? And this occurs in molecules with alternating single and multiple bonds, which in general may lower the overall energy of the molecule and increase stability. Lone pairs, radicals, or other ions may be part of the system, and the compound also may be cyclic, just like I showed you the benzene molecule before. So conjugation is the overlap of one p orbital with another across an intervening sigma bond but we'll get into more detail in a second. I just wanted to introduce you to the topic. So I also put this image here for you to show our designed pi conjugated molecules which can be used for different applications in material science, coordination chemistry, photophysical, magnetic properties, and molecular recognition. So although you're just learning this maybe bland topic of conjugated molecules, they ultimately have a lot of really cool applications in modern organic synthesis. And you can get novel functionalization with different molecules. This is probably something that you don't really hear about at this level, but I wanted to show you what kind of cool applications exist based upon conjugated molecules. So let's go back to what I was talking about before. For any molecule, the best structure is always the one with the lowest energy. So to give an example, for methane, we do not draw it like this, which is square planar, right? Instead, we use VSEPR to draw it out like this, in a tetrahedral configuration. On the other hand, when we talk about ethane, we can either draw it as staggered, where we have the three hydrogens like so, and like so on the other side, instead of this. If you remember going over this stuff very briefly in general chemistry, you should also review it, talking about eclipsed and staggered configurations of ethane molecules. So in this case, this is staggered, and this is eclipsed. And which is the best structure? The one that's staggered, right? We can also draw these as Newman projections, which I'll show you right here. So remember, staggered configurations are guys where the hydrogens look like this. And these are called Newman projections. And on the other hand, if you have an eclipse configuration, it looks like this. So basically, you're turning around the single bond right here, and you can make it look like a staggered configuration or an eclipse configuration. And the staggered one is always lower in energy, and thus it's the better structure. So in case you don't remember drawing the Newman projections and also talking about the different alkanes that are staggered and eclipsed, make sure you review that for this topic. And so the lowest energy for minimizing electron repulsion and maximizing p orbital overlap is very important for conjugation. So in addition to the lowest energy, in order to minimize electron repulsion, we also want to maximize p orbital overlap. So two things that we always want to take into consideration is the lower the energy, the more stable the structure, and we want conjugated molecules with the maximum p orbital overlap. So to now answer the question of what exactly is conjugation, I'm going to show you a couple of examples that will illustrate this for you. So the first one is 
involving the relative stability of C4H6 isomers. So let's look at this example together. So since it's C4H6, that means it's CNH2N, right? Remember when we went over the different hydrocarbons in the first chapter, we said that when you have this particular formula, it's going to be an alkene or a cycloalkane. And just to remind you, when we talk about isomers, it means something has the same molecular formula but a different structure. So all of these different molecules right here have the same formula of C4H6 with four carbons and six hydrogens, but they all have very different structures. So if you look at this axis right here, you have the delta H of formation or the enthalpy of formation. And this hypothetical enthalpy change when a substance is synthesized from elements in their standard states is going to be an indication of the most stable isomer because the lower the delta H of formation, the more stable the isomer. So let me note that down for you right here. The delta H of formation being lower means it's more stable. So now let's look at this diagram that I drew out for you guys. We go from the delta H of formation of 0 all the way up to 91.8 kilocal per mole. So basically, the guys up here are going to be the least stable, and the guys down here are going to be the more stable, right? So now let's look at the trends to see what is causing this stability or instability. So looking at these guys right here, these we have two alkenes right here and we have an alkyne right here with a triple bond in the middle. So these two are 1,3 dienes. Dienes because there's two double bonds, enes because they're alkenes. And the position where the double bonds are is in the 1 and 3 position. So in these two examples as well as these examples, there's no ring strain. Since unlike these cycloalkanes or cycloalkenes, there's no ring strain because they're just straight molecules. Also, it has two pi bonds in each of the structures, and they're also alternating. So in the case of the 1,3-dienes, they're alternating from pi, sigma, and then pi like so, pi, sigma, pi, pi, sigma, pi. So now let's look at these guys, these guys that involve the cycloalkenes, and in this case we do have ring strain, right? Because we have ring structures, and we have one pi bond, which is the double bond right here for all of the different structures. And finally, let's look at this molecule that has the highest delta H of formation and thus is the least stable molecule. In this case, there is no ring strain because it's a straight molecule and it has two pi bonds. So why is it in this particular order? Is ring strain a contributor? No, it doesn't seem to be the case because there's no ring strain down here and it's pretty stable and there's no ring strain up here and it's not stable and then there's ring strain in the middle and doesn't make any sense. Does it involve the number of pi bonds? Well, we have two pi bonds right here. We have two pi bonds up here again and we have one pi bond. So again, we're unable to see a trend based upon the ring strain and the pi bonds. So now what can we look at? we should look at the position of the pi bonds. And this is going to be a very important thing to understand when it comes to looking at conjugation. Now I move on to the second example for understanding what conjugation is. And so this example involves the catalytic hydrogenation of dienes. So again, dienes means that there's two double bonds since it ends in ene. So this is an example of a catalytic hydrogenation reaction, and we find significant differences in the chemical properties of dienes depending on the structural type. And in the case of catalytic hydrogenation, which is the addition of H2 to a pi bond with a catalyst, this converts all dienes to alkanes.
So let's look at this example. We have a double bond right here. This is a very simple example. And the H2 is added to the two carbons right here across the pi bond. So after the addition, these two hydrogens came from this H2 right here, and PT is the catalyst. So when this conversion of dienes to alkanes occurs, the heats of reaction, or the heats of hydrogenation, reflect the characteristic differences in their thermodynamic stability. So in this case, the delta H of the reaction is negative 30 kilocals per mole. So now let's look at this diagram to see how the thermodynamic stability is affected based upon the stability of the molecules. So the heat of hydrogenation of just one hexene, which was shown right here, was approximately 30 kilocals per mole. And we use this as a reference to find the different heats of reaction for these four molecules. So we find that 1,5-hexadiene, which is right here, so this is 1,5-hexadiene, and this guy generates double the amount of heat of reaction on conversion to hexane in comparison to this guy. And so let me also write that this is the delta H of reaction on this axis. On the other hand, the 1,2-hexadiene has approximately 6 kilocals per mole higher heat of reaction, and it's less stable than this 1,5-hexadiene by exactly that magnitude. So this difference indicates the difference in stability between the 1,5-hexadiene, and let me label this for you too, this is the 1,2-hexadiene. So as you can see by looking at this energy diagram, we can find the relative stabilities of each of these different molecules based upon their delta H of reaction. So now on the other hand, conjugation of the double bond seems to stabilize the 1,3-diene, which is right here, by approximately 5 kilocals per mole. So this is 1,3-hexadiene. As you can see, there's this plus 2H2 due to the fact that all of these are catalytic hydrogenation reactions in order to get back to the alkane. Finally, we look at this guy. We find that this, there's an increase in stability of the 2,4-hexadiene over the 1,3-hexadiene, although both are conjugated. Again, let me remind you that conjugation is the alternation of pi, sigma pi, pi, sigma pi. So this guy is the 2,4-hexadiene. And although both are conjugated, this has a lower energy value than this guy. So why is that? This is due to the increase in double bond substitution of the 2,4 versus the 1,3. So as you can see, the conjugation allows these molecules to be lower in energy, and this catalytic hydrogenation of dienes is a very good example of seeing how the conjugation affects the stability of different molecules. Anymore.